Today we are transforming the seven picket long box into this stylish raised garden bed. Great for people with limited mobility or someone looking to start a small but easily accessible garden. I've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cedar pickets for this project and a hat full of dreams. Cut all the pickets down to their correct sizes using the free plans provided. Take note that you will be cutting a few full width pieces from two of the pickets before ripping them on the table saw. Drop a comment if you like the shortcut version that jumps right into the build, or if you'd like me to do a little more in-depth and cover each of the pickets that I'm cutting, that's fine too. Once you've made all your cuts, this is what your workbench should look like. Now, we're going to break this up into two sections, the main box build and then the bottom bracing for that little storage area underneath. To start this build, I am going to be taking two of the 45 inch long sides. We are going to take our handy dandy glue. This is gonna be an adventure. I was just kind of like low ball looking around to see where my 16 inch boards were to make the legs. Cause I was like, oh no, I don't have those. We got them, they're longer. So squirt in some glue. I am using Tight Bond Ultimate 3. It is their only waterproof exterior glue by Tight Bond. Take your leg. Pop them on, just like that. There you are. If you guys wanted to guess how many nails this build is going to take, my guess is 193. Seems like a good number. I won't know until after I'm done and I edit the video, so we'll see where we get to. Let's get it. So again, four nails into each. And I am using a one inch 18 gauge non-galvanized nail. Apparently you can get galvanized nails pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. Who would have thunk it? Pro tip, if you have a board that is a 16th of an inch longer than the other board on there, make sure you're lining it up to the board that sticks out a little bit farther. If you line it up on the inside board, you're gonna create a gap once you do go to glue everything else up. Four nails. I like to nail this board into place and then give some pressure to push these boards together. So this is where I was messing up earlier in the season, 45 inches long. This piece actually is supposed to go on the inside of the box so you don't see it in the dirt and your outside looks nice and flush. But I did mess up and I put it on the outside where the legs were at. Oops. So now I just put one on the inside and the outside. No one would know any different. Now, 45 inches, 22 and a half is my center. I just get it looking kind of like it's supposed to be there. And then I take my handy dandy square. I line it up. Again, just eyeballing to see where it's at. 22 and a half. Tip them up. Put a little bit of glue. Squish them back down. And then I put three nails into each one of the tops and the bottom. Just like that. Then with this entire baby assembled, we're going to flip him over and then put our other bracing piece on the inside. So again, 45 inches is 22 and a half. Just sits just like that. If it's not perfectly centered, it's okay. Some glue, squirt them down. Check to just make sure. That doesn't even matter if it's perfect. I just don't want it off kelter. OCD-ish, I guess. I like to have the leg facing me so that when I put the next leg onto there, I can see where the edge lines up with the face of the board on my side, just to make sure that everything is looking good. A Little bit of glue on there. See which side you want to face out. I like this darker color, but I want it at the top. So just watch for knots, or if one side looks a little poopy, that would be your inside piece. Otherwise it'd be the outside. And then again, nail them into place. Should 
should have went the other way because of the bend. If you got a little bit of a uh, warp in them, you can just take that out. Angle your air nailer. If it goes straight down, it's more liable to pull straight up. If it's at an angle, it can't do that as easily. All right, and there is one leg. It's 32 inches tall. We just repeat that process for the second. Can we real quick cut back to when I said I knew what I was doing? And so we have this down to a science on how to get this part made. Yeah, survey says that was a lie. So we do need to add this bracing board onto the bottom. It is not a perfect distance. We will have sides going into here in just a moment. So I just center this board best that I seem fit. This little gap's not gonna matter to anybody. And then that gives support for the slats to sit on top of to hold all that dirt weight you guys keep talking about. So I just get them lined up with that bottom edge, tilt them up, squirt in some glue. This one I am more generous than the others, generally. Squish them down, nail the crap out of it. You ready? And you're just going to put a nail about every six to eight inches for support. And then repeat that on the other one that I also skipped. Well, any of you guys guess 100 or less nails? You'd be wrong. This is the part that I kind of struggle with quite a bit, and that is getting the sides put in. I've played with trying to get, you know, the a baseboard put in before I put the sides in, see if that helps at all. It really doesn't. This is kind of an awkward thing to do, especially now that I have a, a bottom put onto them. So what I'm going to actually start by doing is putting a little bit of glue right there. these legs are beefed up a little bit then I'm gonna again find the side of the board that I wanted to use pull them apart start at the top it's because I want everything to line up nice on the top I'm too fat to fit between these it's 16 inches wide get one of them lined up nail him into place three nails and then I'm going to get the other one in place. I do find it a lot easier if you do have it leaned up against something or if you put it on the ground up against a wall. That kind of helps, I, I think. And then I wiggle the bottom one in there. Again, underneath here, that is why it is a 43 inch piece. Three nails into that. And this box, because of the longer legs, I won't be able to do it on my workbench. I'm going to have to move to the ground, which might actually help me anyway. So I grab him, lay him down. Keep your pieces kind of parallel away from each other so that they don't blow out your nails. Give them a little lean. There you go. And we're going to repeat those steps for the other side. Then I'm going to take the rest of those 12 and 3 quarter inch pieces to put into the bottom of the box. Now here I am going to glue again and I want to make sure there's a nice bead of glue so that everything is held into place. Now, starting with the corners, I'm going to put one into here and one into here. Now, you can see that there's a gap, and that's just because the middles have bowed apart a little bit, and we're going to fix that here in a moment. So then just keep stacking them. Now, when I get to these pieces, I do like to get past them. So I'm going to go ahead, put one right here, put one right here. 
So that way I'm not trying to awkwardly cut one of these two pieces with that under lip. Once this is in place, we're gonna grab a clamp and I am gonna stick it underneath. And you can see how it straightens everything else. So where it was a little bit of a parallelogram before, it's gonna straighten in because of the corners. And then finish tightening her into place. Make sure these are nice and down in the glue. And I'm going to put three nails into each. Also, be mindful because there is not that little lip. I wouldn't shoot within the first one inch of this spot. So the, the ends will get two nails. <laughs> This piece is not going to fit into the bottom, so we will need to trim it to make sure that it does. Now, on this end, it is about this far. This end, it's actually equal. So sometimes it is a little bit less or larger at one end, so measure both just to make sure it's not pinching that board. And if you need to leave it a little bit of space, that would probably be best. There we go. So then take your last piece, put him into position and nail him into place. I only think two videos I've actually remembered to tell you guys to put in drain holes. So with this, I'm just using a one quarter inch drill bit and I'm going to drill two holes pretty close together down the centers. And that's just because once that dirt clump dries up a little bit, water will actually not soak in the soil. It'll run right down the sides in those cracks leave the box in the gaps and crevices, and just go right under to those drain holes if they're close to the outside. So I leave the drain holes pretty close to the interiors. There we go. The bottoms will have a little bit of blowout, so go ahead and just run a board on the bottom just to knock those pieces off. And I only put one hole on the very outsides, and that's, again, just because of how the dirt reacts and how water just leaves the box. I have created two little helping blocks. They are both three inches tall. I did not like the look of the four inch tall box. Now these are just gonna get set into the corners. Then I'm going to take my bracing piece, find out which side I want to be the outside. It's this side, that would be the top. And it is going to get nailed into place right there. Now this keeps everything in line, those little blocks, you don't have to hold anything. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue. Push your box to one side, hold that into place and shoot a few nails. Now we are going to make sure that the box is touching on this other side. If it's not, pull the two together because this distance is the same as this. So pull your box together, four more nails. Then you're gonna just move your stop blocks to the shorter side, take your piece, apply some glue. Be mindful that your edge is a little bit shorter on these pieces and then smack him into place. Three nails into him. And then again, we are gonna squeeze that box into position. Now we're just going to apply glue to this top ledge. Alrighty, and same with the top. So. I do just start with the corners to make sure they're butted in nice and straight. And then you're going to want to make sure that this edge lines up. So we are going to be kind of squeezing these boards together as we nail our way down. I'm going to do this first half and then I'm going to come in from the other direction instead of putting them all down because then it's going to kind of move all the glue around. Well, I'm out. Anybody guess 200 nails? You'd be wrong. All 
All right, with four in place, I'm gonna start from the other side now. I was like, my worst nightmare, I'm gonna have to put in a sliver. <laughs> and then I should have just spaced these out so you didn't have that. It is an option if you guys wanted to space these out, save a little wood. And voila, there's the bottom. Something else I do with most of my builds is I wait to cut the miters until the very last. And that is just because if your boards have cupping or oversized, Anything to that nature will throw off the miters on the top, and that is really what the customer's focal point's going to be when they first see the box. So I come out to 46 and an eighth, and 15 and an eighth. I'm gonna add a quarter inch to both of those. 15 and 5 eighths and 46 and 5 eighths are going to be my mitered cuts. Apply glue to the top lip and nail the top mitered boards into place. 